try 0.30. All right, so this top ring is out of spec. Mainly now we want to check the piston rings on each of the cylinders. We're going to take them off um, and actually just measure the piston ring gap. Uh, because I know the bores are straight, I'm just going to do uh, check the piston ring gap with the pistons, uh, setting the ring gap at the top because it's just easier. I don't have to flip over the block and do all that stuff and muck about. So um, we're going to check the top ring and the middle compression ring. Um, I tried to print out another sheet, but pretty much piston one, two, three, four, five, six, top and middle ring um, gap. The permitted, oh no, I have to write this out. The permitted gap, I think, was 0 0.018 to 0 0.33, and the middle ring 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. So, even just taking a look at these pistons, I mean, um, I was expecting a lot worse. So if you guys look, I'll just grab piston number one. The rings aren't seized. They move freely. Even the oil control ring. They are not gummed up. Well, I take that back. Maybe this one is a little bit gummed up. But what I've noticed in comparing um, notes online is... I believe this is the updated piston design. There is a part number there, 7542057.02. Um, the old piston ring design didn't have any um, oil passages here for the oil to, to pass through. And what would happen is it would get really badly gummed up. As you can see, there is a, actually quite a bit of corrosion here. Not corrosion, sorry. There's a bit of um, oil buildup. But you can tell that the, that the rings, the ring passages aren't blocked. And you can tell that by shining a light in there. Do you see the hole there? Oh. Nope, there it is. Do you see the hole there? Well, and that one's totally not blocked. Do you see the hole there and the hole there? So I think this is actually the new piston design. Um, I'll have to tear apart my, my current E90 to see because um, the oil control rings on piston three are, are pretty much stuck, they're done. So I'm gonna take these piston rings off. We're gonna put them in the cylinder and we're gonna measure um, the skirt. Piston skirt looks okay. We can also measure that later using the micrometer. I think they're all good though. Everything is pointing in the direction of, we got a semi-rebuilt engine here and it just needs a little bit of freshening up with new gaskets and such. So I think we lucked out. So this is the top ring for piston number six. And normally, you should have a marking on it that says top or anything. I don't see any markings on this. Even on the side, normally there's a little, little stamp like it would have one square or two squares for middle ring or bottom ring. But you can tell which one's the top compression ring. Number one, by just measuring it, 1.12 millimeters, just under that um, for the top compression ring. And the mid middle compression ring is 1.5, so it's a lot thicker. And the middle compression ring actually has this lip on it. And the lip should be facing down. It's kind of, it's a little ridge, um, a little step up. So if I, if I was to draw it for you, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like that. There's a little ridge on there that scrapes the oil, I'm assuming, downward um, towards the crankcase. So make sure that when you install that, that little ridge is facing downward. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna start with piston six because I already had the piston rings off. I'm gonna place this in here about an inch down, carefully. And we're gonna use the top of the piston to center it. I haven't taken the oil control ring off this one, so I'm gonna be careful to not push past that. You just want to center it on there. And then we're going to take our feeler gauge, which I bought. And what we're looking for on the top ring again is 0 0.18 to 0 0.33 millimeters. So I'm going to look here on the gauge, sorry, on my feeler gauge for 0. Point, there's 0 0.1, the golden one. We're going to go to 0 0.18. Oh, wait a minute. Am I reading this in millimeters? Yeah. Here we go. Sorry. There's 0 0.18 right here. And I'm going to try and fit that in the gap. 0 0.20. Nope. Let's try 0 0.25. Let's try 0 0.30. 0 0.43 on the top ring. All right, so this top ring is out of spec by 0 0.1 millimeter. Let's try the, I'm going to clean up this uh, middle piston ring, or let's just slap it in there. Permitted is 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. There's 0 0.3. Nope. 0 0.35, or let's just go 0 0.4. No. Nope. 0 0.35. That fits, 0 0.38. That fits, okay, let's go back to 0 0.4. Well, that fits. 0 0.45, that fits. 0 0.5. I mean, 0 0.5 just fits in there. Let's try 0 0.53. This is confusing, guys. Nope, 0 0.5. 0 0.54, maybe. It's in between these two, 0 0.55, 0 0.53. Yeah, 0 0.53 is too small. 0 0.55 just fits. Let's try bigger, 0 0.58. No. So I'd say 0 0.56. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, piston number six, the top ring is 0 0.43 and the middle ring is 0 0.56. And that's just out of spec by the top 0 .0, 0 0.01 and the middle by 0 0.06. So these rings were just just worn out of spec. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the rest now and see what's going on. So, yeah. I just uh, finished measuring all the ring gaps for the top and the bottoms. Um, they're all out of spec. 
Uh, remember the biggest number for the top ring is 0 0.33 and the biggest for the middle ring is 0 0.5. And as you can see, they're all above and out of spec. So they're all worn out. Piston one and two, the middle rings were completely out of spec. Um, I think maybe I was measuring a bit too easy here. As I went along, I got better at, at uh, so my, my advice for you guys is when you're doing this, is to center this up, use the piston to center it in the bore evenly so it's not at an angle, and then try to fit the feeler gauge right in the middle. Just put the last bit of it on it. I was trying to like measure it like this, and that wasn't doing good because then uh, it was this was shifting and moving about. But if you just use the middle part to gently fit it in between the ring gap, you don't um, move the ring around so much. Um, and that was a really helpful too, to measure quicker. Because when I was like trying to measure like this at an angle and it was touching and then I'd remeasure and I'm like, oh, why? Isn't it working? Anyway, just, just make sure to use just the end to put it in between the ring gap. You'll be good to go. So the bearings are good, but the rings need to be redone. Um, according to BMW, you can't um, measure the oil ring gap. So let's take one of these off and take a look at it. So the oil ring, uh, the oil control ring comes in three pieces. There's and there's one. Wow, it's very um, not brittle, but it's very bendy, very weak. All right, so there's the lower one. I don't know if there's a difference between the lower and the higher. Probably not. There's the higher one. Put left, right. Now, how do you get this one off? Oh, there is. Found it. Oh, wow. This is just like nothing. It just pops right off. So, I guess you can't measure the ring gap. Okay, well, I've tried to fit it in the bore. There seems to be a tiny little gap there. They seem to have. I'm assuming this is cut. Hmm. Because it doesn't go on like that, it just sits like that. Okay. Interesting. So this is going to be, all of this is going to have to be re-ringed. Re so before we move on, I just want to measure the pistons. Um, you measure uh, the wear on the skirts. You measure the wear from here to here. It should be, again, the size of the bore or just below the size of the bore. And BMW spec says it's, the bore is 82 millimeters and the piston should be 81.97 to 81.99. So I'm gonna go and set up my micrometer here. 80, there's 80. That's 81, that's 82. So I'm gonna go to 81.97 and we're going to grab a piston. Maybe I should put this in a vise or gently put this in a vise. And we're just going to measure did I read this wrong? I read it wrong. One more turn. That's 81.97. Just gonna tighten that down just for a second. To... It's actually bigger than that, which is good. Now that we're in the ballpark of what we're trying to measure here, I'm gonna put this on. I'm going to loosen this up just a little bit. I'm going to find kind of center point. And then it has this little um, ratcheting thing that applies the exact amount of torque 
that's needed um, to turn on this. And then we can measure 82.9, the last one before zero, 82.9. So, um, sorry, 81.99. So this one is good. So I'm just gonna go through all of these really quickly and try and measure the end there. Try and center this up. 81.97. This is uh, this is a bit challenging to get the right measurement. Am I in the middle? 81.97. So I think all these pistons are good. We're gonna reuse them anyway, cause this is supposed to be on a budget. 82.2, so I measured that wrong. Eighty one point nine seven. These pistons are all still good to go. Eighty one point nine seven. Eighty one point nine seven. All right. So we just looked at all the pistons, all of them are good to go. They were all within spec, um, so we're gonna just put this away. So hey everybody, hope that information was useful for you. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at boring out the block and how to do that and how to clean the surface of the block to get it ready to put back together. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel to follow along on this rebuild project and we'll see you guys in the next video.